Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we will discuss a very important clinical related to your azygous venous channel. So let's recall that you all remember that azygous vein was basically connecting your superior and inferior vena cava. So suppose this is the heart, the blood that is coming from your entire upper part of the body, the deoxygenated blood is going to drain into the heart via the superior vena cava. Superior vena cava is responsible for bringing the deoxygenated blood to your heart from the upper part of your body. While the inferior vena cava does the exact opposite, it brings deoxygenated blood from your entire lower part of the body into the heart. So what happens? The superior vena cava, as we studied earlier with that, it received the azygous vein. And the azygous vein basically brought blood from the thoracic cavity to your superior vena cava. So what happens if in this entire venous channel there is any type of a blockage? So there are two types of blockages that can actually occur. One that can occur before the entry of azygous vein. So if this is the azygous vein, the blockage can occur, which is scenario one. And the other type of blockage that can occur is after the azygous vein has entered, after that, the superior vena cava undergoes blockage. So these are the two scenarios that we have to basically understand what happens in case of this. At the end of the day, all the blood has to somehow go towards your heart. And how will that happen? So let's discuss scenario one. So when there is blockage before the azygous entry, how does the blood flow back to the heart? So the blood from the upper body has to somehow form a route in order to be able to come back to the heart. In this case, azygous vein was entering the heart and it is simply entering the heart. There is no blockage here. The blockage is actually lying just before it. So what happens in that case? Well, the azygous venous channel is still open. So the blood can still somehow get to the azygous vein and enter the heart. As we all know that the azygous vein is receiving blood from your posterior intercostal vein. So somehow if the blood from over here or from the upper half of your body can enter the azygous vein through the intercostal venous channel, maybe we can get the blood into the heart. How does that happen? Well, for that you need to know the root over here. As you all know, the superior vena cava, the tributary of it is the brachiocephalic veins. And the tributary of brachiocephalic vein is subclavian vein, if you all remember. It's similar to the artery course, but it's just flowing reverse direction. As we all remember, subclavian vein is formed by the continuation of the axillary vein. And we all know that axillary vein will have tributaries such as the circumflex scapular vein, which goes into the subscapular vein, which goes into the third part of your axillary vein, similar to the artery. So what happens is the channel opens up. From the superior vein of cava, the blood goes into the subclavian vein. And from there, it goes to the axillary vein. And through the axillary vein, it goes into the subscapular vein. Through the subscapular vein, it will enter your circumflex scapular vein, after which it will enter the anastomosis of the scapula. And the anastomosis of the scapula has a direct connection with your intercostal venous channel, the posterior intercostal veins. And that is how the blood will then enter your intercostal veins. And from the intercostal veins, the blood will enter the azygous vein and eventually will enter your heart. The blood from the SVC will now go to the axillary vein through the subclavian vein, after which it will enter the subscapular vein, another tributary of your third part of the axillary vein, and into the circumflex scapular vein which was involved in the anastomosis around the scapula, just like that of the artery. The anastomosis has direct connection with your intercostal veins. And through the intercostal vein, it enters the azygous vein, after which it finally reaches the heart. So this was scenario one. What about in the case where there is blockage after the entry of the azygous vein? This is your superior vena cava. This is your azygous vein. So now what is happening is the blockage is after the entry of the azygous vein. Hence, the azygous vein cannot help you anymore. So there is no way that the azygous vein can bring the blood back to the heart. So what should happen in this case? Well, we all remember that there is an inferior vena cava as well. If somehow the blood can reach the inferior vena cava, it can reach the heart. Because at the end of the day, we have to get the blood to the heart. So in this case, the inferior vena cava is linked 
more towards the lower part of the body hence the lower limb so a very important vein called the femoral vein which is the vein of your lower limb somehow the blood needs to get into the femoral vein the entire channel should open up all the way from your upper limb to your lower limb now the blood has to go from upper part to the lower parts drainage the blood goes from superior vena cava into your brachiocephalic vein after which it enters the axillary vein yet again however the, this time the axillary vein has connection with your lateral thoracic vein and lateral thoracic vein has a direct connection to the thoracoepigastric vein which has a direct connection to your superficial epigastric vein and the superficial epigastric vein actually drains into your great saphenous vein now this is a vein of your lower limb once it has entered the lower limb vein it can easily enter your femoral vein through your great saphenous vein and through your femoral vein it enters your inferior vena cava and enters your heart so this was when the blockage is occurring after the entry of azygous so the azygous is of no use now you have to get this entire blood towards the lower part of the body so it can be drained by the inferior vena cava and this is the channel that opens up from the superior vena cava to the axillary vein to the lateral thoracic vein to the thoracoepigastric vein to the superficial epigastric the great saphenous and finally the femoral vein which is finally getting the blood into the heart so this was important scenario related to blockage of the venous channel thank you so much for watching